Hello again, YouTube, and I'm back with an update video on my uh, GTI controller installation. Um, the GTI controller, which I bought from uh, uh, TechLuck.com uh, from a fellow YouTuber named uh, by the goes by the handle of Enraj. Uh, you can check him out on eBay or uh, go to his website TechLuck.com and uh, kind of take a look at it. And uh, what it is, it's a GTI controller. And what the device uh, does is it sits in between the, a grid tie inverter and your battery bank and based on the voltage um, it will actually uh, divert power uh, from or take power from your battery bank or divert it from the battery bank and the, uh, and the panels up to your grid tie uh, inverter. What it is is the XDX excess power so that uh, it won't go to waste. Um, you know, this little unit that I got uh, from Enraj and uh, TechLuck.com, it's, it's working out pretty well. Um, I have a correction also. Uh, my previous video, I said that I had the unit coming on at 26.2 uh, volts, and because that was my, I said it was my float mode. Um, actually, I went back to the documentation, and, and uh, I bring this up because it always pays to go back to the documentation. And I found out that uh, the battery manufacturer, uh, you know, Optima Batteries, basically what they said was the battery is considered fully charged uh, at 13.1 uh, volts. You can't see it, but I just use it as an illustration. And this is the documentation for my charge controller. And for my charge controller, it says the float mode is 13.7 based on the battery type. This is an AGM battery and it says a 13.7 so you multiply that by 2 so that's 27.4 so I was incorrect in that and again I bring this up to just to say always check your documentation to determine uh, exactly what your battery full charge state uh, is, is according to the manufacturer and the the float mode uh, for your particular charge controller so uh, the unit is working so let's talk about how I've got it installed so essentially, it all everything begins here at the charge controllers. These are true MPPTs or maximum power point tracking charge controllers by Morningstar. They're Sunsaver uh, uh, 15s. Um, uh, so they're basically saying they're 15 amps. Essentially, with these MPPTs, uh, they're, they're they do the job. They do the job well. And so you know they're coming in and they're you know tied together at the negative is tied together on this shunt and the positive is on this positive bus bar. So on this side of the shunt, at this particular uh, bolt or screw, or uh, uh, right here, this lug, um, you know, this is where my trimetric is, and this tells me, you know, the, the, what's coming into the battery and what's going out. On this lug, this is where the actual negative cable to my battery bank is connected. And so I actually wanted to put it, you know, in this case, it, in my installation, it does count or it does matter where I put that, the uh, connection to the GTI. As opposed to putting it here, um, if I put it here, yes, I will, it will tell me what's going coming in and what's going out of the battery bank. But I really don't care what's coming out of the battery bank. So I put it here in parallel, uh, exactly parallel to the, the GTI. So essentially when the GTI comes on, then the uh, power that's being distributed through the charge control controllers uh, down through the wires is actually going to be truly diverted it, as opposed to going to this, this particular cable right here, going to the battery bank, it will be going out to the GTI. So that's why when I come over here, when the GTI is on, which it is now, uh, you can see the rear tie inverter and the GTI kicking on. And if I look here, you'll see that this is my volt, this is my amps, excuse me, that's coming in from my panels. So it's not telling me what's going out, it's telling me what's coming in. So this lets me know that my, my uh, MPPT uh, charge controllers are doing exactly what they are supposed to do. And as you saw, my battery bank is still fully charged. Now again, coming out here, this is a cable that's going to, this, is, this blue right here is actually connecting to the GTI. And also, I have another cable. This one, this red, this positive, um, this this blue with basically that's a uh, connector. And this is a red. This is the power, the positive that's actually also going out to the uh, grid tie controller or the GTI controller. Now, these 
cables here are 8 gauge. They're 8 gauge. They're not 10 gauge. They're 8 gauge. So I followed the recommendation. So I went with an 8 gauge wire and the length is within 5 feet. Actually it's about maybe 3.5, 4 feet uh, to the grid height, uh, the GTI controller so that I will have minimum uh, voltage loss. So from here it goes out into the GTI and um, and I, you know I hooked everything in there. So these are eight gauge cables, you know, that I actually provided from inside to the GTI, and also following up to the uh, grid tie inverter. They're eight gauge. Um, I've tried to be as neat as possible, uh, but anyway, um, so I had to tweak it. You'll have to tweak this uh, quite a bit now to get it. You know, tuned in exactly where you want it. You're going to need to use one of these. These are these are our jewelers. Um, a screwdriver here for if for those very fine minute changes um, because with this right here you're going to have to make micro adjustments meaning very small adjustments in order to, to get it really dialed in and so to the uh, the voltage that you want also it does come with a fuse so I put the um, the fuse in there with it it's a 30 amp fuse however I, I plan to take that out and actually put in one of a an automatic circuit breaker um, similar to uh, something like this. This is an automatic circuit breaker. Unfortunately, I can't use this one because this is based on a 12 volt system and I need a 24 volt 30 amp uh, auto circuit breaker. These things are pretty good. They work out really well. You know, they just, you just, you know, just put them on and uh, essentially with this right here, I won't need to use fuses. Now, back to the, uh, the system here. Again, to the left, you see this little blue uh, little component here, and that is a potentiometer where you adjust the voltage. Now, the key thing is um, micro adjustments. If you don't remember anything else, you'll have to remember micro adjustments, meaning very small, minute adjustments uh, to get the voltages uh, tied in. Um, as Enrod suggests when he sends out the uh, documentation as far as the manual, be very careful in your installation, um, you know, as far as making sure that, you know, the polarities are correct. And also, this circuit board, just like any circuit board, the components are soldered on and everything, but you have to baby it. You just can't manhandle the thing and put it in there. And be careful with these wires. Um, these wires are heavy, you know, they're heavy duty type wires and they're kind of stiff. So you don't want them pressed up against the circuit board um, as you put it together. Now, as it stands right now, things are going pretty well. Now, also notice how I've got the grid tie inverter mounted. As opposed to being mounted vertically, I've got it mounted horizontally so that the airflow will come in through here and exit out through there. True, um, hot air does indeed rise. However, uh, air current actually flows horizontally as opposed to vertically. Um, hot air actually rises up, you know, uh, vertically, true, but air goes from this way to that way, you know, north, south, east, and west, and it's, you know, it flows per perpendicular to the ground. Um, and also, you know, I've got a couple of fans blowing on it. This unit, a grid tie inverter built like this, this is aluminum, aluminum casing essentially, and this is just one big heat sink. So the heat radiates off of the heat sinks. And what the fan does is simply blows the hot, the, the heat away from the heat, the, this, this casing, which is a heat sink, and it blows it away in helping the unit to stay cool. Also, there's air blowing in through the back and blowing, the hot air is being blown out. So the heat will radiate off of the components on the inside and it will be blown out. That way, you have a better chance of keeping your unit cool. Now, these fans, this is a 12 volt, 12 volt RV fan, and the fan in the back is just an AC based fan. This is a DC based fan. The one in the back is an AC based fan that you can get from Walmart, and um, you know, both of them are they're doing pretty good to keep the unit cool. Um, so, not only are we blowing air in, but we're blowing air across. Um, also, now, as you deal with this with the unit and the situation, make sure uh, with this particular unit, make sure that again you get the voltages dialed in the way you want. You don't want it to come on too soon, and you don't want it to come on too late. So it, you're going to have to kind of tweak it in order to get it to work the way you want. Um, 
again, mounting of everything, I think, uh, you know, the placement of the wires, what type of wire you use, and also the, uh, the adjustments that you make. Uh, if you do it right, I believe you'll get the maximum benefit of the unit. Now, do I think it's a, it's, it's a worthwhile buy? Yes, I do. I, I truly do. Um, there are other ways of doing it. Um, as I said before, in Raj, this is a very, very compact way of doing it. Um, my background, I'm, I'm in industrial automation, and I know that there are ways, other ways of doing it. Um, it's just that with the way he's got it done, it's a very compact little system here. You just close the box and, you know, call it good. You know, label everything, making sure, you know, that, you know, just kind of make sure everybody knows what it is. So you can, you know, a little small compact unit. It fits nicely in there. It was very nicely, uh, nicely done. I don't know, you know, as far as the robustness of it, because uh, again, um, I need to wait until, you know, um, I've run it for a little while. Now, if you look right here, my system is getting ready to go into float mode. I got two charge controllers, and they're both trying to decide where to, what to do as far as going into float mode. This one right here is saying, hey, I'm ready to go into float mode right now. So that's what's happening on the on my um, on my system. And you see 24, 27.4, and now it's wanting to kick on, and now it's going. It uh, the grid tie inverter is uh, you know uh, pumping the energy back into my uh, my home uh, because I'm using energy to cool the system. I'm not getting this you know the the uh, the wattage. I'm getting 425 watts right now. Um, but if I turn those fans off, uh, it'll jump up to like maybe 450, 475. Again, uh, read the documentation where your float mode is, and uh, just to make sure you you got. I can turn it back down to 26, uh, 26.2, um, so it'll come on faster or whatever. Or, but the thing is, there's really no need. There's no need at all. Just um, I did, you know, I I agree with uh, the the uh, the person who designed this, or I guess Enraj that, you know, obviously we want to get the excess of, of the charge controllers and, you know, we, we don't want to, you know, hurt the batteries in, in any way. So ideally, if you it also, you got to make sure you have enough batteries to, you know, satisfy the requirement. You just can't get a couple of rinky-dink batteries, put it down there and expect this to go, you know, it, it'll work, but uh, it, not like, not like you, not, not like it, it would if you had a whole bunch of batteries, essentially. So. Again, YouTube, right now, uh, this, the unit is, is uh, working exactly as I wanted it to or as advertised. And again, I would definitely recommend checking out the site, techluck.com. I mean, I'm not getting any kickbacks for this, but I'm not going to hold back useful information for folks that are, you know, trying to get something done. And I see nothing wrong with, you know, um, helping out a, a, you know, a fellow human being or a fellow YouTuber who's trying to make a living off of... Um, you know, off of his ingenuity, you know, by all means, by all means. But anyway, techluck.com, a uh, guy named Enraj, he goes by the handle of Enraj. Um, you know, check it out, and um, it's working fine. My battery bank is fully charged, and I'm taking the excess, and I'm plugging it back into uh, the, my home grid. Now, when we talk about things going to the grid, okay, let's, let's, let's use correct uh, terminology here. What happens is the very first, you know, uh, thing that happened when you pump stuff back into what we call the grid. First of all, it's going to be packed. It's going to be pop, uh, uh, pumped back into your home. Okay, we're going to have appliances where you have appliances that will use that energy first. Okay, the appliances you have in your home, the refrigerator, the freezer. Uh, any fans, the television set, the computers, or our, our, uh, stereo systems, all of those things will use the energy first, all right? So essentially, you know, I'm on, I, if I've got 400, 425 watts of consumables in my home, they will use the energy first. So in that case, we are supplementing our home energy. We're not sending anything out to the quote-unquote grid, per se. If anything, we are sending it to our home grid. Now, if I don't have 425 watts of stuff running inside of my home, then it will essentially send it out to the great big wide grid uh, that's called our utility. Okay, so we have to kind of get an understanding. We're not donating anything out to the utility. We're supplementing energy in our home. So, um, and as you can see right now, it's working well. It pulled the, the, the voltage down uh, to 26 volts. I'm still pulling in 18.6, 18.7 amps, and I'm still at 100%.
Now, I do recommend that if you're considering this, um, <clears throat> get in a true, honest to goodness MPT, MPPT charge controller. PWMs are great, they work fine. But you see, I have, <clears throat> excuse me, I have 670 watts of power, 670 watts of panels, right? And they are in series, they are not in parallel. And so, at most, I would get, on a good day, maybe 8 amps coming from, from either one of those. On a good day, that's if things are perfect, right? But with these MPPTs, because they have a DC to DC conversion circuit in there, and they have the ability to adjust the power, not change the power, but adjust it. Power in equals power out. They can adjust the voltage or the amperage for the benefit of my batteries. So they are, and they will get, you know, the maximum power that those panels can output during a particular point in time. So I would, rec that is why I would definitely recommend, um, you know, MPPTs. If you look at this, okay, if I can expect eight amps on a good day, I'm talking under perfect conditions, and now, you know, and that's with a PWM, but if, and, you know, with panels in parallel, but I'm, you know, if I look here, okay, now you saw earlier, you know, it's going down, okay, because uh, it's a cloudy day actually today. Um, it's going down and it is a cloudy day and notice my voltage will climb. It will steadily climb. But with MPPTs, okay, I've, I've seen upwards of, you know, over 20 amps coming into my battery banks. So that's what MPPTs can do for you. So it'll, it'll climb slowly because again, I have a cloudy day. Now, when I made the last video, there was a comment uh, one of, from one of the, the viewers that said, hey, you know, maybe you need some more panels and it'll come on. No, well, you, you know, not really because it was five or almost 5.30 in the afternoon on a cloudy day after it rained, <laughs> okay? So you have to take that in consideration. All right. It wasn't because I didn't have enough panels. It was on a cloudy day, and it, it was at, at 5.30 in the afternoon when the sun was going behind the trees, and it had just finished raining. So, and it, guess what? It still worked fine. This controller comes into play on those days. So, you know, because, you know, the idea here is even on cloudy days, the sun is still shining, okay? The sun still shines, all right? There's still sunlight, maybe not as much, but still, you can get about maybe one or two amps. So this thing, it'll slowly climb, but you will still be able to utilize the power coming into your system. Okay, now, the analogy is this. On a good sunny day, think of a water faucet, right? On a good water, on a good sunny day, water's coming out of the faucet, at, it could come out at full stream. That is the, the analogy. On a cloudy day, let's say the water doesn't come out as fast to fill up a glass but it's still, it can still come out as, as a trickle. So on a cloudy day, you will still get a trickle worth, worth of power. <clears throat> on a sunny day, you'll get a full, you know, get, you'll get the full amount, hopefully. So essentially, it's, um, so far, I believe it's a, it's a good, good product, it works. As you can see, uh, it just went to 27.3 or four momentarily, it flipped on, it, it flipped on. And now the GTI is working um, as advertised. Um, I want to say good job to uh, Enrod at Tech Luck or whoever you know, whoever designed him and him and whoever designed the, the unit um, works great. Again, there are other ways of doing it, but this is a, this is by far, I believe, maybe the most cost-effective um, and easiest way. I mean, you can do things. You can use things like uh, programmable logic controllers and stuff like that, but. That's for advanced people, and this is for, you know, for the average home person, uh, this is fine. Again, um, you know, take care of YouTube, and hopefully this helps someone.